Mr. Investor, welcome back to the channel, baby. Today, we're going to be talking about prenatal screening, guidelines, and strategy. Exactly what is going on with the stock. Basically, we're going to be talking about all things bingo. And also, I'll be telling you what I've been up to. Before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Miguel, aka Mr. Cowboy. If you're wondering where the bingo rangers came from and the bingo cowboys, you come to the right place. We look for the biggest, the juiciest growth stocks. And remember, none of this is financial advice. This is for entertainment entertainment only. So if you guys have been following my channel, you know that I initially invested in BioNanoGenomics around about $2. I made my first video on them and I flipped it and sold it at $4. Then after doing a deeper dive into the company and looking into the genomic space, I re-entered the stock above $10, $11. So what I've been doing on the dip is averaging down. Yesterday, I bought some shares at $7.77. And today, if this continues to go down, I might buy a bit more if I can get it in the sixes. However, we were briefly in the sixes. We were $6.98 and then we bounced all the way back real fast. So first things first, this is what is predicted to happen for genomics here in England, but I think it's also going to be popping up around the world. So in my last video, you may have seen this clip here. This is a board member of the NHS, the National Health Service in England. And just like he said, I believe that genomics is going to be a part of the healthcare system and not only here in the UK, but across the world. Understanding either the organism, the person or the organism, the infectious agent will become standard of care. Uh, and when we reach that point, the word genomics could almost disappear. It just becomes medicine. Embedding genomic medicine into routine NHS care. So shout out to all my American cowboys and all my cowboys around the world. I believe that genomics is going to be an integrated part of the healthcare system over here. But I also believe it's starting to crop up around the world. So we're going to see it branch out in USA as soon as they're able to get the insurance companies to pay and have reimbursement codes as well on a national scale there. Have you ever wondered why ARK Invest has been cutting down its position in pack b for months after months well we can see here the bingo cowboy messenger of moistville has said bye y'all i quit i can't do this anymore pack b is dead put the rolls in the coffin arc g poopy and the messenger of Moistville over on StockTwits, he reported this. He put this up. SoftBank is reportedly under investigation by the SEC following its risky NASDAQ whale investments. This was put up around the world. You can see here that Vice has been reporting it, Business Insider. And now remember, SoftBank actually invested $900 million into Pacific Biosciences all the way back February 10th, 2021. And this was to support their growth initiatives. So if you look at this key date here, February 10th, 2021, and if we go into Lucy, tracking we can see everything that ARK Invest buys and sells on the date and if we go down to here to February 10th 2021 which is exactly when it was reported that SoftBank was going to put 900 million dollar investment into PacBio the very next day on February 11th 2021 you can see that ARK Invest sold 34 million dollars worth of shares of Pacific Biosciences they then continue to sell off sell off sell off and it hasn't been a day where they've bought they've just continued to sell off another very important thing to notice here as you can see is that the weight was around about 6.4% um, of the portfolio for ArcG. And over time, as they sold off and rebalanced, sold off and rebalanced, it's now only 4.8% of their portfolio. So Ray C7979 over on Twitter said, imagine SoftBank having to pull out their investment on Pack B. OMG, low. Before we go and explore also the SEC filing and the offering that people are talking about, we can see that one of our bingo members, Mr. Shane Pew Pew, he said that while everyone was panicking, I was getting ready for my tattoo. We're far from 100 but we need some goddamn motivation. This man has tattooed bingo across his knuckles. He is in full force. That is commitment to the bingo cowboys. Beautiful. We were going to stamp bingo all across our butt cheeks in Japan, but this is so good, man. This is an early start. So while we continue to be frustrated that BioNanogenomics stock price is just going up, down, yo-yo, and it's been coming down recently, we can see that it's also been happening to Pack B, Invite, and even Palantir. It's a general market thing. Another thing I noticed is we continue to build out our workforce we can see here we are hiring the last two days we've put out loads of jobs we've been hiring for research associates for assays and reagents tech development we've been hiring for our CLIA lab services this includes a data analyst and a research associate we are also hiring here technical support scientists in Europe and another bioinformatician we've got a bioinformatics scientist constant expansion we smashed revenue in a year of a pandemic during 2020 and we continue to march onwards in execution 
executing our plan in trying to get 10,000 Sapphire systems out there. Remember, recently we've also been making sales across Europe, especially to some of those universities here in the UK. We have lots of pilots in place, so you can see here we've got the largest hospital diagnostic lab in Canada piloting Sapphire. I don't know how long this is going to take, but when we do actually manage to get the results of that, if we manage to sell those Sapphires to that hospital network, yet again, it's more proof that we are enabling them to convert away from their 30 year old workflow based on these traditional old ways of using multiple technologies into using a single high resolution assay to transform cancer diagnosis. Next thing is the news from Cisco Trader over at StockTwits. He posted this on Twitter actually, stating that we've entered into this sales agreement and it's going to be under Cowan. So people are talking about a stock offering, they're worried about dilution again. So let's just take a look at what the kind of terminology is surrounding this and let's look at Cowan itself. So in this SEC filing on March 23rd, 2021, BioNano Genomics, the company, entered into a sales agreement with Cowan and Company LLC. Here it says, pursuant to which the company may often sell from time to time and at its sole discretion shares of the company's common stock. So this was priced up an aggregate offering of around about $350 million. Cowan is going to be acting as the sales agent or principal. And the first thing people were worried about was share dilution and the stock dropping. So here it states at the market offering, Cowan is also going to be paid by the company a commission in cash of up to 3% of the aggregate gross proceeds from each sale of shares. So let's take a look at what this means. So Messenger of Moistville on StockTwits was saying that the ATM is not dilution. No shares have been issued or sold. So if we check into this ourselves, let's look at what ATM is. ATM stands for at the market, as in at the market offerings. In an ATM, a listed company sells newly issued shares incrementally into the existing trading market for a broker dealer at market prices. So they're saying here, how are ATMs flexible and controlled? A company can start or stop the sales of shares as needed, which is why ATMs are sometimes referred to as dribble out programs. So it's unlike a traditional stock offering where a fixed number of shares are sold at a fixed price all at once. An ATM offering sells shares incrementally at the prevailing market prices, selling at the market. So here on Brinson Patrick, they're basically saying that ATMs are in the best interest of shareholders. And they were talking about this particular one It's called the Docs ATM offering, dynamic offering of common stock. It's a highly customizable program. The company can set a stock price and not unnecessarily dilute existing shares. It gives management teams flexibility and power to get additional financing on the best possible terms. So as we can see here, the ATM facility puts control into a company's hands rather than the hands of its finances. Typically less expensive, more flexible and less likely to cause unnecessary dilution than other types of offerings. It's a smart approach that will gain the backing of institutional holders. So the messenger of Moistville also highlighted that the ATM is with Cowan. So if we look into Cowan, he is stating that they're the smartest bank on the streets in tools and diagnosis. Their analyst in this space, Doug Shekinel, is hands down the best. So let's take a look at Doug. So this man on my right at Cowan is Doug Shekinel. He's the managing director, healthcare, life science and diagnostic tools. So he's a managing director, senior research analyst in the medical technology research group. He specializes in the life science tools, diagnostics, medical equipment and labs industries. Prior to joining Cowan's medical supplies and devices team in 2005, Mr. Shekinel was a vice president with Global Biomedical Partners, managing a life science crossover fund. Mr. Shekinel previously worked in private equity with Triumph Capital Group and started his career with Cowan in the healthcare investment banking group. So when big baller funds want the G2 on a name, what is G2? So G2 refers to military intelligence. So it's when big ballers want intelligence. They call up Doogie or the Cowan ATM desk. They don't call Opco. We need this to move up market. And just some quick proof that this man knows his stuff. Let's take a look down here. If you go down here, there'll be articles written by him where he's covered stuff and he has his insights into the market. As you can see here in September 18, 2020, there's an article called Ahead of the Curve. It's about liquid biopsies, early detection of a huge investment opportunity. So as you can see here, the insight is by Doug Shekinel. He was talking about liquid biopsies using a blood draw to identify genetic signatures associated with cancer. And he was basically saying that they estimate the market opportunity across all classes of liquid biopsies ranges from at least $30 billion to $130 billion just in the United States alone. And this is interesting to note about liquid biopsies because the analysts over at ARC said the same thing. Liquid biopsies are being empowered by NGS and they're probably one of the most important tools in an oncologist toolkit of the entire century. What they allow doctors to do is use sequencing to find very small fragments of DNA in the blood and use that to guide cancer care. They're broadly applicable across the entire cancer care continuum, all the way from being used to detect 
cancer in its earliest stages when it's the most treatable, so that's called screening, to therapy optimization, meaning understanding the mutations that are happening inside of the patient and using that information to match them to the targeted therapy that's most likely to cure them of their disease. And even more importantly, something called recurrence monitoring. When a patient is treated and ends their treatment cycle, whether it's surgery or chemotherapy, it's important to be able to monitor them over time to ensure that the cancer doesn't come back in force. So all of these areas are being completely changed through liquid biopsy. We estimate that in the US alone, those markets served by liquid biopsy could be worth as much as $100 billion by the end of 2025. So these guys have put that prediction in before ARK investors put the prediction in and put transparency into it too. So this man's one of the very best. Are we going to see some magic happening with institutional investors later on? And as you guys just saw previously when I showed you in the other slides, it shows that prudent financial management that at the market offering allows fundraising without the big discounts we have given in the past. It is a game changer. So by selling at the market, if they're predicting, you know, if they want to make the most out of the cash money, instead of offering, you know, a low rate of say five dollars a share six dollars a share and then offering a certain amount of shares if the stock price goes up to say $12, they can then incrementally sell some shares then. And if it goes up to 15, sell a few more. Another thing I wanted to talk about is this kind of filing with the SEC. You can see here, Bionanogenomic securities to be offered to employees in employee benefit plans. So they have registered two of these securities here, title of securities to be registered. You've got a 2018 equity incentive plan as amended stock, 0.0001 cents par value per share. They're registering around about 9.4 million. The proposed maximum offering share price per share is $8.90 and this is up to $84.5 million worth of shares. So tell me if I'm right, tell me if I'm wrong, I'm just trying to learn this myself but when I see an equity incentive plan for staff it means that they're trying to retain their staff. So I remember Nano Dimension talking about um, buying a company when they do buy or merge with a company Nano Dimensions what they're going to do is they're going to buy with equity and cash not all cash because if you give them all cash their staff can disperse they can go wherever they want or they want to tie them in with equity. So this was signed not only by Eric, by uh, the CFO Stuart, it was also signed by all of the board members, the directors and the board members. And one guy that we looked at previously was Christopher Twomey. So what they want to do is give these guys the option to have these shares. Um, and maybe with this equity plan, I think what happens is they get paid via a bonus. So if the company reaches a specific sales target, if they're managing to cash flow, make some money and they hit the bonus target, that's when they will get some of this part of the equity incentive plan. And I think this is also quite similar here to 2018 employee stock purchase plan. This is up to 220,000 shares. They can buy this at a maximum offering price of $8.90. So I'm thinking if the stock value goes up to $20, can they still purchase these stock at $8.90? That'll be very good for the employees. And this is up to $1.9 million worth. Again, incentivizing their employees to stick around. I don't know what the details are of this. Maybe they have to stick around for one year before they can buy stock, two years before they can buy stock. And we've been literally looking to hire so many people. So we want to get the best staff in there and make them stick around remember let me know your thoughts this is just me trying to interpret the data and information but i could be right i could be wrong so just let me know because remember one of our board members mr uh, twomey christopher twomey if you look at his purchase behavior of previous boards that he's been on in previous companies he stayed with a company as a director right he bought the stock for around about two dollars seventy five thousand shares and he did not sell he waited two years before he sold he bought the stock in 2018 february 9th 2018 and then he started to sell the stock two years later when the company managed to do well. So he sold at $80, $90, $100, and $110. Effectively from $2 all the way to $110, 55xing his money. So I think it's vital to make sure you've got good directors, good staff, and you tie them in using equity. And I'm also wondering what the money is going to be used for. Because if we're slowly dribbling out these shares via ATM onto the market, someone before told me I was wrong when Nano Dimensions uh, were going to basically sell shares in order to raise capital, in order to buy companies. But I think if we're raising this much money, what are we working on now? next will there be an acquisition later on down the line because we're going to have a lot of cash flow coming in in future years we're looking to improve the sapphire system we're trying to make one with higher throughput but also the sequence is coming through and will we be acquiring another company maybe in liquid biopsies or something like that this is just speculation that would give us access to another market because we've got a war chest of about 300 million 350 and we're adding another 350 million over time what is the ultimate plan of this company i wonder so what i'm going to do i'm going to be releasing a next video um it's all about 
about prenatals and moving into that zone. So I'm going to release that video later on or maybe tomorrow. Hit me up with your thoughts surrounding all of the things that have been going on in the market and bio nanogenomics, everything related. Let me know if you've uh, bought quite high and you've been averaging down into the stock or also let me know what is your current holdings? What's your average price if you've been in the stock for a while? If you're able to support my channel, please click the join button above my head. But if you're unable to join channel memberships, just you hitting like and clicking subscribe on this video means the world to me. Thank you so much for watching. Mr. That's the lot. Over and out, baby.